The second indicator is anger. Again, the second indicator of your purpose is anger. I know that sounds weird. Bear with me. <sighs> sounds so odd. Anger. Yeah, anger is the second indicator of your indicator of your purpose. We're gonna read a very extensive or two very extensive passages of scripture, but this is very important to understand. We're gonna talk here about Moses and Israel. Exodus, I'm gonna read it from the actual Bible. I like the Bible. Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 through 12. Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 through 12. The Bible says, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren. Um, listen, it came to pass in those days, the Bible says, that when Moses was grown, when he became an adult, that he went out unto his brethren and he, and looked on their burdens and spied on an Egyptian, on an, spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him from the sand. Now what happened is here that there was a man named Moses, and he was born a Hebrew, somebody who was from Israel. And he grew up in Egypt. He saw another Hebrew being oppressed by an Egyptian. Now technically, Moses, all his life, he thought that he was an Egyptian, yet when he saw a Hebrew being oppressed, he was so angry that he went and killed that Egyptian and hid the body. Why? Moses grew up an Egyptian. He did not know that he was a Hebrew. He thought he was an Egyptian. Why did Moses go kill an Egyptian that was oppressing a Hebrew? Because he, Moses was actually Hebrew by blood. He just grew up in Egypt. What happened actually is that when he was younger, the king of Egypt or the Pharaoh was killing the babies that were Hebrews because, well, I don't have to get into that. I don't, have to get, I don't have to get into the reason why. He was killing Hebrew babies and Moses was a Hebrew baby. What Moses' mother did is that Moses' mother took Moses, put him in a casket and put him in water and Moses' daughter found Moses. That's what the word Moses means. Moses means drawn out of water. Moses means, or the Hebrew word Moshe. That's, that's the, uh, Moses is, is an English uh, transliteration of Moses, uh, Moshe. The actual, the actual name is Moshe. And Moshe means drawn out of water. The daughter of Pharaoh drew Moses out of water and grew him up or raised him as an Egyptian, even though he was a Hebrew. And when he grew up, he saw one of his Hebrew brothers by blood being oppressed by an Egyptian and got so angry, even though he thought he was an Egyptian, he killed the Hebrew. Now, that won't make sense until I read the next passage of scripture. Remember, we're discussing anger being an indicative of purpose. Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. Remember, bear with me now, wrong passage of scripture. Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason. In fact, let me just read all of Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 through 10, so that you understand the concept. Now, the Bible says, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro. So let me give some context. What happened is that Pharaoh, even in, you know what? Let me start from Exodus. <laughs> let me go all the way back so we understand what's happening here. So we're not confused. Let's start from Exodus chapter 2, verse 15. So we understand what happened after Moses killed uh, one of the Egyptians. The Bible says, now when Pharaoh heard this thing, heard that Moses killed an Egyptian, Pharaoh sought to slay Moses. Now remember, Pharaoh technically is like Moses' uh, grandfather. He grew up as Moses' grandfather because Moses' mother was Pharaoh's daughter. It's not his biological mother, kind of his adopted mother. So he was adopted into this Egyptian family. And technically, this is his grandfather. As he knows him as his grandfather. But when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to kill Moses. When he heard that Moses killed an Egyptian, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. You see, now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs with water, uh, their father's flock. And the Bible says, and the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Uel, their father, he said, how is it that you are come so soon today? And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and they also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. 
And he said unto, see, they thought Moses was an Egyptian. And he said unto his daughters, and where is he? Why is it that he have left the man, call him that he may eat bread? And Moses was content to dwell with the man. He gave Moses Zipporah as his daughter. So this man that Moses comes to help take care of his sheep, this man gives Moses a wife. And she bore him a son, Moses bore a son, and she called him Gershom. And for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. Now, verse 23. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried, and their cry came up to God by reason of the bondage. Remember, why did Moses kill that Egyptian? Because they were being oppressed by Egyptians. And this is still continuing. They're being oppressed by Egyptians. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. What happened? The Hebrews are the people that God made a covenant with, or he made a covenant with a man named Abraham. And God promised Abraham that he would bless his people, that he would be the father of his people, he would protect his people, and made a whole bunch of promises about his people. And I'm getting so much into that, we have to stay on, on the, th the subject that matters. The idea is that God found a man and promised that everyone in his lineage would be his people and that he would take care of them and bless them. Just keep it there for essentially. And those people who are the Hebrews are being oppressed by the Egyptians. And because God made a promise to protect those people, he has to come save those people from their oppression. So listen, verse 25, and God looked upon the children of Israel, that's the Hebrews, and had respect unto them. Now, verse chapter three. This is back to Moses. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Of, of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush was burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. So God manifested himself this is what's called theophany a visible manifestation of god where god manifests himself in a physical uh in a physical way something you can see with your eyes because remember i said before god is invisible but god can reveal himself in visible ways and the way in which he decided to reveal himself to moses was through a burning bush a bush was literally literally burning with fire but the bush didn't burn and so what happened and moses said i will now turn aside and see this great sight why is the bush not burnt? Now, there's a bush burning with fire and the bush is not burning. In other words, the bush is just burning with fire, but the bush is still intact. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's weird because that goes against science. If I burn bush, the bush should disintegrate into dust, right? But the bush is still intact. And so when Moses saw this, because he grew up in Egypt and uh, they were very, very intellectual people, he understood science to a degree and understood that this bush should be disintegrating before my eyes. This bush is on fire and it's still intact. I have to go see this thing. So God got his attention. Verse four. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And then Moses said, here I am. And he said, draw not, uh, do not come close. Take off your shoes from your feet for the place you're standing on is holy ground. Verse six. Then moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham. Remember, Moses is a Hebrew by blood. And so he's connected to the lineage of the man named Abraham, who God made the promise to, that he would protect his people, the lineage after him. I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. Isaac is the son of Abraham and the God of Jacob. Jacob is the son of Isaac. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. Verse 7, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard the cry by reason of the taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Verse 8, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. So God sees they're in pain. He wants to save them from the oppression that the Egyptians have them in and to bring them out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. So God wants to take them from Egypt and to bring them into a beautiful, beautiful land called Canaan. And now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I've also seen the oppression of where the Egyptians oppressed them. Now, verse 10, listen to this. He says, come now therefore, and I, God, will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people 
the children of Israel out of Egypt. Why is this important? Remember what happened before. Moses grew up an Egyptian, a Hebrew by blood. He sees an Egyptian oppressing a Hebrew. He does not know he's a Hebrew. He thinks he's an Egyptian, but he gets so angry that he kills that Egyptian to save the Hebrew. Why did he do that? Do you not see that his purpose in life was that God was going to use Moses to deliver the Hebrews from the Egyptian oppression? He was going to deliver the Hebrews from the slavery that the Egyptians had. And that's the purpose of Moses' life. But before Moses knew God and even knew his purpose, he was already having an inward desire to see to it that the Hebrews were not oppressed before he knew that was his purpose. And so in the same way, the purpose of God in your life, one of the indicators is that what is the thing in this life that when you see you are so upset about that you have the greatest desire to do something about it because other people saw the hebrews being oppressed but moses was the only one that was so angry that he wanted to do something to change that situation why because it was his purpose whenever something is your purpose god will give you what's called holy anger you'll be so frustrated at seeing that thing happen that you'll want to bring a solution. Why? Because God created you to bring the solution. And so he brings you this desire so that it will drive you to want to seek God to bring the solution. That's the purpose of that holy anger. It's, it's like, for example, if God created you to, to be a, to be someone who maybe takes your call to be a, uh, a philanthropist, a philanthropist, right? What God will do is that beyond, of course, other people will be upset at seeing people who are suffering of poverty, but you'll have this strong anger about it to the point that you, you'll not be able to sleep some nights on, uh, realizing that some people have to go to sleep without a roof over their head. It'll bother you more than it bothers most people because God has called you to do something about it. We're not all called to do everything. We're not, everyone, no human being can do everything. Not even Jesus did everything. Jesus didn't do everything. He wasn't a businessman and an engineer and everything. He only did a few things in his life. And the thing that which, in thing in which God has called you to do, it will give you a strong desire to see to it that that thing is done in your life. So if God has called you to be a philanthropist, the word philanthropist means lover of man. Uh, um, anthropist means man and philo means love in, in Greek. It means love of man. It means someone who loves men. God will give you a supernatural desire to see to that people are taken care of beyond what other humans have. The same way Moses had such a burning anger for seeing Hebrews being oppressed. Why? Because he was called, his purpose in life was to save Hebrews from slavery. So God gave him a, an anger of seeing that thing so that he'll be driven to want to bring a solution. God gives you that holy anger so that you'll desire to bring the solution. That's one of the indicators of your purpose. What is it that you see that upsets you the most? You just can't stand seeing that thing. It is an indicator of your purpose. Other people can see it and be upset, but they're not upset enough to want to bring a, a solution. It upsets you so much that I, you just want to bring the answer. You can't stand seeing this thing in the world. You want to bring a solution to it. It's your purpose. That's what God created you for. That's why it bothers you more than other people can't even understand. Why, why does it bother you so much? Yeah, what's the big deal? So yeah, whatever. Who cares if Hebrews are being oppressed? What's that to you? You're a prince in, in Egypt. You're in the palace. You're in, you're in royalty. Why do you care if a bunch of Hebrews are being oppressed? Why does Moses care? Think about it. He is rich. He's a, the son of Pharaoh. He's the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He's grown up rich all his whole life. He's grown up in a palace. Why the heck does he care about a bunch of slaves being oppressed? What does that have to do with you? What does that have to do with him? Why does he care so much? Think about it. Imagine growing up in a palace full of wealth, riches, anything you can ever ask for, the best food, the best services, the best everything. And you're so concerned about how some random Hebrews are being taken care of. Why do you care? It's his purpose.